All right, everybody, welcome back. And in this episode, we are going to finish out the login UI by making it look like this. So we had uh, the login button at the end of episode 10, and we want to add the social media buttons and a link to sign up in this episode. And so we're going to start by bringing in Font Awesome. I want to use Font Awesome for the Facebook uh, F and the Google G. So if you go to pub.dev and search Font Awesome, we'll use Font Awesome Flutter. We'll go to the dependencies, get the latest version, and put that in pubspec.yaml. And save it. Wait for it to import, and then I'm going to fire up the emulator. All right, so we have a, a widget in our widget folder for the button. Uh, and then I want to create a different button for social media uh, icons. I want those to be those rounded buttons we saw uh, just a second ago. So in widgets folder, I am going to create a new file, and I'm going to call it social underscore button dot dart. And to get myself started, because this is going to be somewhat similar to our button, I'm just going to grab the entire class, including the imports from app button, copy it over here to social button, paste that in, and then I'm just going to modify as needed. And so the first modification will be the class name. We want app social button instead of button. And then our constructor needs to also be social button. And we had this, um, this uh, strategy for changing the color of our buttons with this button type enum. Uh, and I want to do something similar here. I'm not going to need to button text because we're just going to use the icon. So we can get rid of that. But instead of byte button type, we'll use social type and rename the variable social type. And let's scoot down to our bottom where I have this enum. And let's change the button type to social type enum. And here we can list the different types of social networks that we want to allow the user to log in through. And for starters, we're just going to use Facebook and Google. Later on, if we want to add more social networks, we can do that here in the enum. So our constructor is just going to have one argument, and it's going to be required, and that is the type of social button that we're looking to display. So this.social type. And I'm just going to put that all in one line. All right, then our switch, we don't have button type anymore. We have social type. And let me leave the rest of those options the way they are for now, because let's come down and define what our button's going to look like, and then we can decide what inputs we need to switch to if it's a Facebook or a Google. So in the first place, I don't want this thing to stretch across the width of the screen. I, I'd like it to be roughly round. So I'm just going to make the width button styles. I mean, it's called button height. Technically, that's not accurate, but basically we're taking a double that we've defined in our styles, and we're going to make it the height and the width, so we can just recycle that. That's fine. Uh, we want a box decoration with the button color, so we know we're going to need button color as a, as a variable. Uh, border radius, of course, we want to keep that consistent with the others, so we'll keep the border radius from the base style. Uh, the box shadow, we can keep that. The child, we don't want a text, we just want an icon in the middle of the child. So instead of text, let's take that out. And 
we actually don't need center either. Let's just do icon and for the icon we'll need to pass it icon data so we're going to need to define that so let's just call it icon for now and then we'll give it a color which will be I guess we'll just call it icon color for now so when we switch we're going to need to define the button color which we already have done up here we've carried that over from our copy and paste but we're also going to need to give it the icon and the color of the icon so now that we have our variables that we need for our switch let's come up here we can do button color first and we can do an icon color and icon data which we'll call icon All right, and so for our cases, we're going to get not button types, but social types that we've defined down below. So we'll get one that's Facebook, and we don't need a font style anymore. But we need to define an icon color, and we'll do white on that because that's the, the Facebook uh, F is always white. And we'll need a button color. So we want the color of a Facebook blue. And then we're going to want a Google uh, blue. So to get those, I'm going to a place called uh, Lockdown Design. And they have a blog. It's uh, lockdownseo.com slash social media colors with a dash in between. And here they give you the hex values for the social media colors. And you could probably find these in a number of different sources. Uh, but we're going to take the Facebook blue and we're going to take the Google blue right there. And we should put those in our styles colors. So if we go to styles, we go to colors. I'm going to define two more properties. One I'll call get Facebook. And that will go to constant color 0 FF and <clears throat> 3B5998. It's the color I'm looking for. And I'm just going to copy and paste, save myself a little typing. So we'll call this one Google. And that's 4285F4. All right, so if we go back to widgets and social button, when it asks for the button color, we are going to set that equal to app colors dot Facebook. And then here, we're going to create a, fa a case for Google. So I'm just going to take the case right down through the break. I'm going to copy that. And I'm going to change the social type to Google. Icon color, we can keep that white. Oh, I defined button color twice, didn't I? So we can keep that, the colors white. Let's do Google for our colors. And this should be icon here. So we want to change it to icon here and icon there. And so this is where we want to bring in font awesome. So we can use font awesome icons. And there's two for Facebook and you want the F. So the capital F. And then for Google, uh, there's a few Google, Googles, but I just use the regular Google one. And we don't need this many cases, so I'm going to take everything out between Google and the default. 
and I'm going to make the default Facebook. So we'll just take these three values, we'll paste them down here, we'll format the code, and we're looking pretty good there. So I think we're all set. I'm going to take this style out because we don't need it. All right, so coming back to screens login, after our app button for login, let's put a, an or in the middle before our social media icon. So we'll center, we'll do a child, we'll do text, and we'll say or. And for a style, we'll give that our text styles suggestion. We want that to be kind of faint. Like that. Let me save that. So there we go. It's just kind of lightly uh, insinuated. And then we're going to want a row with children. And let's do our first app social button. And we'll give it a social type of Facebook. And then let's do another app social button. And the social type will be social type Google. And we'll save that. All right, so there they are. They don't look great. So up in our row, let's center them. So let's do main axis alignment, main axis alignment center. Now, because it's centered, it doesn't look too bad here, but the other text fields or the other rows in the uh, interface do have padding around them. So I'm going to wrap this with padding. And when it comes to the padding, I'm going to reuse the helper function we created before, which is in base styles. And that is list padding. So that does add a little padding to the top. And now, so these are, are kind of round, but they're not quite round. Um, so I'm going to go to my styles, and I'm going to go to my base styles. Now, we made these a height of 50, and our border radius is 20. And so they've ended up looking a little boxy. So I'm going to bump up the border radius to half of the, the height and width, width, save that, and you can see that everything changed. These boxes, text boxes, the button, everything got a little bit more round, which is kind of the point of doing the styles so that we have one, uh, one variable that we can change if we decide to and change all of our visual elements on the screen. So that looks pretty good to me. And the last thing I want to put on here is a link to go to the sign up page if you ha do not have an account and you want to sign up. So if I go back to login and after the padding, I'm going to do another padding. And I'm going to do padding, and I'm just going to call on my base styles for my list padding. And for the child of that padding, I'm going to do rich text. And I want to create really kind of an HTML look with some text and then a hyperlink uh, in the text. And so I'm going to achieve that with a rich text widget. And so I'm going to text align that so it's centered. And for my text, I'm going to do two text spans. So the first one, text span, my text is going to be new here. And my style is going to be text styles.body. Nope, 
body. Then I'm going to give that some children. And the child of it is going to be a text span. And the text will be sign up. So I'm embedding this inside of this text widget. And the style of that will be textstyles.link, which does not exist yet. And then we're going to give it a recognizer, which basically sets up a hyperlink for us. So it's a tap gesture recognizer. Open and close your parentheses. Go to the next line, go dot dot on tap equals open and close parentheses fat arrow to navigator. Navigator, you still have to spell it right. Push named, and we're going to use our name route. So we'll pass it context and sign up. All right, so let's visit uh, text styles to fix that link. So under styles, text, let's take our body text, let's copy it, let's paste it right down below. Let's call it link. We can keep the text at Roboto, Textile, Colors, let's do Straw, Font Size of 16, and a Font Weight of FontWeight.Bold. And we can save and format that. So coming back to Login, we can see that our error is resolved. Looking over here at our interface, we have our Facebook and our Google buttons. We don't have any uh, actions on them yet, but we'll get there. We have sign up. It has a tap recognizer, which is ready to push to our named root sign up. And it takes us to the sign up page where we can bounce back to log in. So let's make one quick stylistic tweak before we wrap this one. I feel like there should be a little bit of space between the or and the login button. So back in login.dart, if we come up to in between the app button and the center, let's just put a size box there. And let's give it a height of six. And maybe we'll do the same below the center as well. All right, and these are a little, there's a, a bit of a gap here between the social media buttons and up here that I don't necessarily like. Uh, if we go back to our widgets and we go to social button, there's padding around these and we, we, we set padding, we set the list padding for these uh, big block buttons and they're overkill on the social media button. So let's get rid of padding in our social media button. like that. Now if we go back to login, we can just space these any way we want with a sized box. With a width of, uh, let's try 15. There we go. All right, so give yourself a pat on the back. We have a login UI, and the next time we come back, we are going to create a sign-up page, and I promise you that is going to be very quick because of the work that we've done uh, up until this point. So until then, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.